China purchased four second-hand aircraft carriers. Why did the Chinese Navy only choose to continue building the Liaoning? As we all know, the Chinese Navy's aircraft carrier journey started with the Type 001 Liaoning, and the predecessor of the Liaoning was the Soviet Variag. What is the story behind this? Let's take a closer look in this video. In fact, as early as the 1980s, the Chinese Navy began preparations for the development of aircraft carriers. In 1985, China purchased a retired aircraft carrier Melbourne from Australia. It was the HMS Majesty of the British Royal Navy during World War II. It was only more than 20,000 tons, but it was a real aircraft carrier. It had an angled deck, arresting cables, and most importantly, a catapult that could launch carrier-based aircraft. Although it was small, it had everything an aircraft carrier should have. Of course, the Melbourne was only bought for dismantling, but the Chinese Navy seized the opportunity and conducted a comprehensive inspection of the scrapped aircraft carrier. At the same time, the Chinese Navy opened a flight captain class in 1987, selecting ship commanders from pilots and starting the reserve of aircraft carrier talents. In 1988, the Chinese Navy began to demonstrate the development of aircraft carriers, and finally formed Project 891, using the Melbourne as a prototype to build an aircraft carrier with a displacement of 50,000 tons, using steam catapults and arresting devices. All shipborne weapons and ship electrical systems are self-produced, and the carrier-based aircraft are J-7 or J-8, and even considered to be equipped with carrier-based early warning aircraft. However, after entering the 1990s, Project 891 was not implemented. On the one hand, given the situation at the time, developing aircraft carriers was indeed inconsistent with China's military strategy. Second, the Navy still had many weak links that had not been made up, and aircraft carriers were not the most urgent need. Third, there was not so much military funds available at the time, so the matter ended in vain. After this, China's aircraft carrier development entered a low period. It was unrealistic to follow the original route and conduct full independent research and development. China had to find a way to move forward in a roundabout way. There were several ways at that time. The first was to purchase directly from abroad. China also contacted some Western shipyards, but most of them either ignored it or offered prices that were too high to accept. Obviously, with the end of the Cold War and the drastic changes in the international situation, it was difficult to buy equipment from the West, let alone aircraft carriers. The second way was the northern power, Russia, which was born on the remains of the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union was equipped with multiple aircraft carriers in the late period. In particular, the most successful 1143 class, five ships were put into service, from 1143.1 to 1143.5. There are also two ships under construction, namely the already completed 1143.6, that is, the Variag and the 1143.7, which has been built about 40%, that is, the nuclear-powered Ulyanovsk, both of which are at the Nikolaev shipyard. Of course, the performance of the five 1143 aircraft carriers that have been in service is also different. The first four, namely the Kiev class, are what the Soviet Union called heavy aircraft carrier cruisers. They have no bow flight deck, only an angled deck to operate carrier-based aircraft, and can only carry vertical takeoff and landing fighters such as Yak-38 and Ka-27, helicopters, etc., and cannot use heavy carrier-based aircraft. 
They are a hybrid of cruiser and aircraft carrier elements with a large number of weapons and equipment installed on the bow, which is very messy. Only 1,143.5, that is, Kuznetsov, has deviated from the design of the first four ships and finally used a full through flight deck, ski jump takeoff, arresting cable landing, and can use Su-33 carrier-based aircraft. Although it is still inferior to American aircraft carriers, at least this is a serious aircraft carrier, not a four-in-one. At this time, Kuznetsov had been preempted by the Russian Navy and had already arrived in Murmansk. Therefore, the options left for China are very limited. At that time, Russia was selling off the first four 1143-class aircraft carriers, and Ukraine was also looking for buyers for the last two, 1143.6 and 1143.7. Since the performance of 1,143.7 was closest to that of American aircraft carriers, and the completion was not high, it was first targeted by the United States. As soon as the Soviet Union collapsed, a shell company was sent over there to negotiate with Ukraine for dismantling business in the name of purchasing scrap steel. When the Black Sea shipyard saw this good thing, it started to dismantle it in February 1992. Of course, in the end, a high price was negotiated and a low price was offered, which really fooled Ukraine. China could no longer have any thoughts about 1,143.7. Then, the only options left for China were 1,143.6 and the first four. The Chinese were actually very honest and discussed three projects at the same time. 1,143.1 Kiev, which had been parked there since it was decommissioned in 1993, was publicly auctioned by Russia in 1997. China bought it and said it wanted to transform it into an aircraft carrier park. The second ship, the Minsk, was auctioned after being decommissioned in 1995. It was first bought by South Korea and then by China. These two aircraft carriers were bought by China one after another. Although the aircraft carriers that have been purchased are ostensibly for China to build aircraft carrier parks and casinos, it is actually difficult to say whether there is any consideration to avoid being obtained by China's potential opponents. At the same time, China seems to want to take this opportunity to actually see whether the first four 1143 aircraft carriers have the potential for transformation. The results of the inspection are disappointing. 1,143.1 Kiev and 1,143.2 Minsk are completely unsuitable for improvement. On the one hand, these two ships are really a bit old. Both were started around 1970 and they were already 30 years old around 2000. And after more than 10 years of high-intensity use by the Soviet Navy, their reliability and performance are not good. It will take more than 5 years to transform, and then it can only be used for 10 to 20 years. The cost is too high and the cost-effectiveness is too low. It is completely not worth the loss. Second, the design of the two aircraft carriers is also unreasonable, especially the huge island, which has a great interference with the takeoff and landing of carrier-based aircraft. Without the blueprints, China had no idea how to modify such a large island, what could be moved and what could not be moved. The result of forcing it might be that the structure of the aircraft carrier was damaged, the strength was reduced, and safety was endangered. Third, before selling these aircraft carriers, Russia had done some damage inside, and most of the things that should be dismantled had been dismantled. Especially the power system, the damage was particularly serious. 
to repair it, the hole must be cut, which wastes time and money, and without the blueprints, it is not clear where to start. So, this road is also broken. Finally, China found that there was only one way to go. That is to go to Ukraine, find the old factory director Makarov, and buy back the 1,143.6 aircraft carrier. First of all, like 1,143.5, it is a serious flat deck, a resting cable and ski jump takeoff aircraft carrier. The technical starting point is much higher than the previous four ships, which is conducive to directly mastering aircraft carrier technology. Secondly, this aircraft carrier started late. Moreover, it was not completed when the Soviet Union collapsed. The hull is new, the steel quality is very good, and the engine has not been damaged. It is very convenient to continue to build or transform. Finally, the Nikolaev shipyard still retains a full set of design and process drawings, and its advantages in all aspects are very obvious. After excluding all possibilities, independent research and development has been directly rejected by superiors, and it is impossible to ask the West for help. Ukraine's 1143.7 has been dismantled, and Russia's Kiev class is not suitable for improvement at all. China finally chose 1143.6, that is, Variag. After complicated operations, it was bought back to China. Later, with the changes in the international situation, the Chinese central government decided to launch the aircraft carrier project. At this time, there is no need to start research and development from scratch. Starting directly from 1143.6 in Dalian Port, the transformation and continued construction projects are launched in full swing. The last pride of the Soviet Red Navy has become a reality bit by bit in the hands of the Chinese, and became China's first aircraft carrier Liaoning in 2012. This is the story of why the Chinese Navy did not choose independent research and development for its first aircraft carrier, but chose Variag as the starting point. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.